racism has become so embedded in them that it becomes almost like, like, uh, what is it, second nature? It becomes so embedded and ingrained in them. So we as black people look at the Zeitgeist movie, and we look at, say, this uh, so-called um, the, 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 the whitewashed Jesus, that image of Cesare Borgia. We see that particular image, and we know that's an image of Pope Alexander the Sixth, illegitimate son. But white folks, most of these white middle of the road, I call them nominal Christian, Christian or churchins. When they see that image, they view that image as 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 the Christ. No amount of proof or data will dissuade them because they grew up looking at this particular image as the Christ, the image on the left. When we show them the image on the right, something in them, it's almost genetic, something genetically in them resists that. Now, let's stop for a moment and, and look at those who worship the so-called Jesus image that is on the left, the, the, the Jesus image right here on the left. Let us... Christ says, according to the word, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, according to the Metzaf Kedus of the Bible, according to the Holy Bible, he says to judge a tree, and we're going based on the King James translation, judge a tree by its fruit. You would know the tree, right? You would know the tree. If it's a good tree or if it's a bad tree, right? You would know the tree by its fruits. So in watching all of these so-called Christians go out there to challenge the Zeitgeist movie, and the main part of the movie that they have a problem with, the documentary by Peter Joseph, the main part that most of the nominal whitewashed Christians and their followers have a problem with is the first part, because they say that it equates Jesus Christ with pagan religion. You know, with pagan Egyptian religions. But really, that's not real, with the real problem there. The real problem is the blackness. The real problem they have is the blackness of it. And they would even go so far to even stand up and say, okay, those who did make certain things bad, like the Inquisition, they was not Christians. They were Roman Catholics. But Roman Catholics called themselves what? But notice this. This is still all a part of the same root. The image, that same image on the left, the Caesar Borgia's image, it's been updated many times. And they'll play it in these videos. Like, for example, there's this, there's this uh, scripture that was quoted, which is the scripture that was quoted. It's, it's the Thessalonians. The Thessalonian uh, scripture that was quoted. Where's the Thessalonian scripture? The Thessalonian scripture that was the well, the well known, even to people that don't know the Bible really, they probably heard of this. And they said, like, it's a 2012 event with the New Ages. So, what we see is this is that on one side of the spectrum, we have the Theosophist, the Blavatsky followers, you understand, the, the porcelain goddess followers, the Elena, Helena uh, Blavatsky. Remember that name, Helena, too. Don't forget that name, Helena. Helena. Helena in the Ethiopic means conscience. So she's a conscious. She's created a consciousness. She's kind of given birth. She's like Helena Blavatsky is a mother of this Aryan philosophy. So most of those who are into this new age thing like Acharya S and um, Peter Gansey and, and all the uh, Benjamin Krem and the rest of them, they are intellectual Europeans somewhat knowledgeable Europeans, somewhat well-read and traveled, and they understand some things about ancient cultures, 
to even know the, 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 the real people behind the new age thing, they know that the so-called Jesus image on the left, they know it's a lie. They understand it's a lie. But what these people like uh, Keith uh, Thompson and some of the debunkers of that first part, although we don't, you know, we don't embrace that first part of the Zeitgeist movie, uh, um, the first Zeitgeist film as well, mainly because they kept using the Antichrist, Jesus Christ image that we have right there on the left. They don't, they refuse that black Christ. Now, the only black Christ or Christ-like figure they show is the Maitreya thing. But it doesn't seem like a lot of these new ages, you understand, are willing to embrace that, although they'll talk about it. But even that is very sketchy because the person who showed up in that Kenya village, I don't think in that article about Jesus or whatnot, is, is this Jesus? Did Jesus really appear? I don't think he said he was Jesus, did he? It's the people who, he didn't say he's Maitreya either. It, it is actually Benjamin Krem and these other folks that actually have tried to connect with that, but the majority of those white folks, although they know that the Cesare Borgia image, the popular whitewashed Jesus, blonde hair, blue-eyed Jesus, although they know it's a lie, they're not fully willing to embrace the true Christ because they're not dealing with the true Christ. You know, they're dealing with some demons. They're dealing with doctrines of devils. Now, the, the quote that we was going to make right here, Second Thessalonians, can we watch this? What was the name of that film anyway? What was the name of that Keith Thompson, the, the, the Keith Thompson film, just for the record? Um, because it kind of inspired a lot of, uh, it, okay, what's the name of it? Um, Aquarius. The Age of Evil, Aquarius, The Age of Evil. I would say it's a, for some it might be a must-see film, but it's more of the same, but it has some interesting twists and turns in it as we are looking now at this whole 2012. So I would recommend Aquarius, The Age of Evil, the full movie by uh, Keith Thompson. I call him a whitewashed Christian apologist. He's one of the whitewashed Christian apologists. He believes in the Jesus that is pictured on the left, the whitewashed Jesus, the Roman Catholic Jesus converted into the Protestant Jesus. That's still in the same Jesus image as Mystery Babylon Jesus or the Vatican Jesus, basically the New Age Jesus. Basically, this is the same image as the Ascended Masters sort of Jesus or New Age sort of Christ, you know, it's because they still refuse the true biblical image, which is the image on the right, the black and white. They said, let's put it in black and white. You know, saying in black and white, you still recognize that Christ is black. You know, it's saying in black and white, the Bible says this concerning Second Thessalonians. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by, well, let's go from the top, from chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians, the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, the day of the Lord of Adonai, and the man of Chatiat of sin, of missing the mark. It says, now we beseech you, brethren. Who is it speaking to? The brethren. Speaking to which, which brethren? The brethren of the true Christ our black Lord and Savior, by the coming of our black Lord and Savior of our Lord, Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christos, and by our gathering together to him, that ye, you all, be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of the Moshiach, the day of the Messiah, the day of Christ, is at hand. Just make a note about Christ, the name Christ. And we've talked on this in some other lectures, but it's very important that we understand something very, very carefully. Even in the film, uh, Aquarius, the Age of Evil by Keith Thompson, he has this woman who wrote uh, 
was it the dangers of the rainbow? Beware of the dangers of the rainbow. Some some um, uh, book like that that she she wrote, and she was at some Benjamin Krem meeting, and somebody, some black woman who looked like, according to her, her um, suppressed racist mind, this white woman in in the in the video. She said that the black woman looks like somebody who would like will be like right at home or comfortable in any kind of Southern Baptist like you know, congregation, you know, and you stop for a moment. See, they say these things because they're unconscious. White folks are unconscious of their own latent racism. And we have these two camps. You remember it says in, in, in Revelation that the, 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 this beast would have almost like two horns. You see where it, it shows that um, the, the feet, the, the, the feet of that beast, so that statue, that image, has these two legs. And that's the last part of the idol, and that's where the stone crashes down. The stone that's not cut by human hands, it crashes down, and it destroys the image. It causes the image to fall over. And that's according to Daniel's, to Daniel's um, prophecy. Now, on the, on the point about Christ, because you hear them say a lot of times, and this is where a lot of folks are confused because they don't know the Bible. Some would say that, well, there's only one Christ, right? There's only one Christ. And let's ask them, well, what is Christ? They say, well, Jesus is the Christ. Now, a lot of the New Ages, they know the truth, but then they add on. See, when this says the devil is a deceiver, a liar, a deceiver, the, the key word is the deceiver, they know that Christ is a title. Christ is a title. How do we know Christ is a title? Let's just turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse, um, let's go to verse 41, where it says, And he first findeth his own brother Simeon, or Simon, and saith to him, We have found the Messiah, M-E-S-S-I-A-S, which is being interpreted the Christ. Notice that right there. We have found who? We found the Messiah, which is being interpreted what? Which is being interpreted the Christ. So that means Christ, by virtue of the Bible, St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 41, is an interpreted idea. Now, what's the big difference? Well, the big difference is that it says we found the Messiah. We found the Messiah. He is who? He is the Moshiach. We have found the Moshiach. Now, let's ask the question, were there more than one Moshiach? Now, this does not say that our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is not unique, is not the Andia Lij, is not the Bain Ha Elohim, Baruchu, is not the Son of God, is not the only begotten. Now, even some of our people who are uh, biblically ignorant, they might reject that particular idea because they have not studied the actual documentation for themselves. So where do we get this idea now? Is it Christ or is it the Messiah? Which is correct? Look at the, this image that we keep on the screen right here. If you look at the image on your left, the image on your left is the, quote, Christ or Christ. Make a plural, Christ. Because there's many different images of the same, the same white dude, blonde hair, blue eyed white dude. This recessive gene. This is that's the recessive Christ. We see the recessive Christ. The true images of Christ, and Christ was known to be as he was a black man. I mean, it's very clear. And see, for their eternal lives, they could not accept that reality because they've made themselves believe in the image on the left. So they cannot accept the truth on the right. Do the math and face the facts. It is very important that you learn the origin of the word Christ so that you can understand, begin by understanding, and ultimately overstand its meaning and the gross misconceptions surrounding it. The word Christos or Christ finds its origin 
in the Greek language. So this word Christ. So when we say Jesus Christ, even the Jesus Christos, this is according to that first century Koina, Koina Greek. You understand? And the Koina Greek is different than the classical Greek, which is a whole different subject matter. Now, because it was Koina Greek or because it was in Greek does not make it bad, wrong. But it means, and the Bible now clarifies this in John chapter 1, verse 41, that the term Christ has a original rootage or reference point or source. And that source is in the Hebrew, it has Messiah, which is from Messiah or Moshiach. And if we look into what the word means, it means the anointed. In Old Testament biblical Israel, Prophets, priests, and kings all, all were anointed. And the anointing was the ordination for their office. So when ones were anointed, this was to officiate them in their capacity. Now there's a spiritual meaning applied in the New Testament. You understand? There's a spiritual meaning applied. So where we have oil in the Old Testament, we have the Spirit in the New Testament. So when we talk about being anointed by the Spirit, it's being anointed by the Spirit in the same way as one was anointed by the horn of oil. So all this is very, very Ethiopic and very ancient and Hebraic, and there's a rootage to that. But the word Christ finds its origin in the Greek language a language whose grammatical system and translation is, obviously, very different from all the other Afro-Shemitic languages, all the other Afro-Shemitic languages, like Ethiopic and Hebrew, Aramaic and Arabic. The word Christ in the English is a corruption, you understand, of the word Christos, Christos or Christos, some say Christos. Joe Macy talks about the nuance and the difference of that. But basically the word Christ that we have is the English corruption of the word Christos, which is the Greek interpretation or rather the explanation for Greek speakers of the word Mashiach, Mashiach or in Latin Hebrew the Moshiach. The Moshiach. Now, the word Moshiach originates now in the Hebraic, and it means, in a sense, to wipe, to pass over anything in order to wipe it, to be made clean. Even it has a, a, a sense of smiting it with the sword. Later on, you, you have the roots of the word, the idea of wiping something. When you wipe it and you anoint it, if you look in the temple and the tabernacle, the different, the different furniture and the different instruments in the tabernacle and the mishkan were anointed by oil. You understand, in a sense, to officiate, to officiate their, their usage. So you will have to refer to the etymological roots, and then you'll find the real root of mashiach. And this goes well to the very roots, even to ancient Egypt and further to its root in Ethiopia. Now, the Greek word, you understand, the Christ is a Greek word with no other known origin, basically. The word Messiah literally means the anointed. So they could have said, it's like in today's language, if we were trying to explain this and not using Greek, we would say, and we found the Mashiach, we found the Moshiach, who is the anointed. So people would have been saying, the anointed, the anointed, the anointed. But then they spoke the Greek language, was the popular language of the people, like today, the popular language of the world is English. Now, the term Christos was not even used during the lifetime of the Mashiach Jesus. In other words, the word Christos was not the word that was used during his ministry and during his time. 
we have this now in explaining it to others, you understand, both Jew, saying black, Jew, Hebrew, Ethiopian, Hebrew, and Gentile, and among the Gentiles or the Greek speakers were some of the black scattered sheep of the Beit Israel, as well as some other nationality and ethnicities, including white folks or, or, or Europeans, Greco-Romans from that time, but we should not always assume when it says Gentile. See, people assume when it says Gentile, it's always talking about just white folks. But it's talking about a lot of the, for example, Paul, before he explained that he's a Hebrew, could also be considered from a certain vantage point a Gentile because he had Roman citizenship. Now, this term, Christ, was not used until after the ascension, and we have the key evidence in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, 26, that it was at Antioch, you know, or Antiochia, that the term was applied to the disciples, actually as a sign of mockery. Christianoi. That was a sign of mockery. In other words, these are little Christ. In other words, their God is Christ. You understand? These are, these are those who are of this Christ thing. That's how it was given to them. You understand? It was not applied to them. It's, it's almost similar in the same sense that we say dreadlock today you know, or dreads. You know, like how dreads was used. Oh, oh, he's a dread? Oh, that was a dread. You understand? Or even abbreviated in the sense of Rasta. In that same sense, that it's often not used as a compliment, but it's used in a derisive sense. But in Acts of the Apostles 11.26, it says, And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, to say with the ecclesia, those who were called out, those who were gathered together and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So it tells us right here in the Bible in Acts of the Apostles 11, 26, that they were first called Christian in Antioch. Go get a good biblical map and find where Antioch is. And then find where Jerusalem is. You understand? And then trace how it moved from there and what year and approximate year and time this was. Some say it was around 61, around the year 61. Now, according to their chronology, Christ was crucified roughly around, around 33, 34, if you push it, 40, 40 A.D. So that was at least 20 or more years. Now, the pagan, the idol, the Greek God-worshipping Greeks, they used to mock and scorn the disciples, the black disciples. Why? Because these niggas refused to worship the white gods. It's just like today, if we say, we, we put up this picture of Christ or a black picture of Christ, what do they do? What do these whitewashed Christian apologists do? And even some of the, nigg the, the lost niggas, they mock us too. You understand, that's not Jesus. Oh, that's your Jesus. They will accept the guy on the left. Because remember, on the left is the goat. On the right is the sheep. So the pagan Greeks, they used to mock and scorn the disciples who had established themselves in Antiochia or Antioch and who were spreading the Timherit, the teaching that was taught to them by their teacher, by their rabbi, the Mashiach, Jesus, or Yehoshua, by saying that the disciples thought themselves to be holy and some spiritual men, hence the name Christianoi, or Christian, which means something spiritual, that's how it was interpreted, something spiritual was given to them. It's similar to how these, um, these white Jesus apologists kind of beat up on everything that doesn't bow down to their image on the left. They do the same, very same thing. Now, but if you compare the words uh, uh, Meshian and uh, Meshi, or the anointed and anointed one, 
Meshian and Mashi is the anointed, you would see that both of these words basically mean the same thing. So when you hear some Christians say, there's only, uh, or there's only one Christ, they're not being accurate. You understand? When we say Jesus Christus is the Christ, he is that Messiah, Moshia, according to the prophets and the prophecies, but that's not to say that there was not other Messiahs for called Yisrael, for Israel or, or Israel Hulu. However, in the King James Version of the Bible, these words have been translated as Messiahs and Christ, two different words with their own separate meanings as well as origins. We felt that that's, that's important for us to touch on that particular matter even before we move on because, you know, these are points that as you start to watch these videos, even as we've been watching Aquarius, um, The Age of Evil by Keith um, Thompson, there were various issues in it that we wanted to comment on. So this is one area where we're taking um, uh, Christian liberties to comment on a couple of areas. Now, let's go to that scripture again about the day of Christ the, or the day of the Messiah, the day of the anointed. You remember the Bible saying those who um, the first fruits and, and each one after their own order and the first fruits of Christ are Christ, we call of Christian, so therefore we take that name upon us. You understand? So when the Greeks call them Christianoi, Christians, they wasn't saying that you are the Christ, every individual Christian, but every individual Christian in truth is supposed to be in Christ and of Christ, and therefore to stand up testifying to represent Christ. So they represent him as the master, but they don't deny that they are of Christ. It says, many shall come in my name. What was the name of the Moshiach? The name of the Moshiach wasn't Moshiach. That was the title of the Moshiach. The name of the Moshiach was Jesus. So the Bible clearly tells us that many shall come in my name, in the name of Jesus. Many shall come in that name. We as Rastafari, we come in the new name of Rastafari, of Ketamawi Haile Selassie, who bears witness to the true testimony and example of, of the biblical and the authentic Jesus Christos or our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So verse 3 says, let no man deceive you by what? Any means. By any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, of Hatiyat, be revealed the son of perdition. Now, we wanted to actually open this up, open this up previously, and if uh, you bear with us, let's see if we can, um, if we can uh, open, this, open this picture up to show you who the son of perdition, who is this son of perdition? Because it's very clear that at that time, Paul was aware and Paul knew that this would come to pass. 